What's going on, people? It's your boy, Mill Hustles, back with another wrestling chat with the buddy Isaiah. We have a very, very special guest, a monumental one. My goodness, how bigger, how bigger can you get than Big Josh TV? What's up, Big Josh? Well, hey, Mr. Hustles. Honored to be on your podcast, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Actually, it's Isaiah's podcast. I'm a yeah, Isaiah. He's the real king right here, Isaiah. <laughs> I, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a couple of subjects I want to touch touch on today. And you know what? We're going to start with the one that you had, Isaiah. Is MMA killing pro wrestling's popularity? So I'll go ahead and get started with my thoughts. And then we'll jump to Josh and then you, Isaiah. All right? Yeah, that's what I... <laughs> Yeah, you know, save the best for last. All right, go ahead. Um, UFC is not killing the popularity of pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is killing the popularity of pro wrestling, okay? Because you got so much bullshit going on, especially as far as the booking goes. It's too repetitive. It's lazy. We know it's not going to change. You remember what we spoke, spoke about last week? They had their best financial quarter in company history. Something they're doing is working. They're still super profitable. Booking doesn't matter anymore. Um, as far as the UFC and MMA her, taking some of their popularity away, sure, it's stiff competition, you know? UFC is very, very uh, entertaining. So is Bellator, MMA, and things like that. But as far as killing it, wrestling has been around too long for it to completely become irrelevant, in my opinion. What do you think, Josh? Well... Yeah, you got got a point there, Mr. Hustles. And the other thing is that you got like the world MMA with like Ronda Rousey trying to go to WWE, and then yeah, Brock Lesnar went to UFC, and it's just such a clash of two different worlds to where people are spending more money on the MMA UFC than the WWE. Very true. And if Ronda ends up going to the WWE, that's going to definitely make bring headlines, ratings. It's going to draw a lot of money. Okay, here's my sense on it. I agree with um, Mill Hustles on it. Like um, UFC MMA is not killing pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is killing pro wrestling for the following reasons. Um, first of all, pro wrestling has been around for like many, many centuries since like been around since like the the civil war era so that's you know actually crazy. wrestling has been around since biblical times bro yeah I mean, it hasn't been exactly what it is now but it is probably the oldest sport there is yeah wrestling i i've read that wrestling is actually uh one of the oldest sports if not the oldest that there is and and, and mma has hasn't really been around for that long even um uh i'll post the link to the article below but dana white himself has admitted that that uh the ufc hasn't gone mainstream yet no and not and, only that business is actually down for them right now yeah they, they've only been around for how many how long you, how long has the ufc UFC's been, been around since 1994 i think they've been around a while yeah so, come Compared to the WWE, WWF, which has been around for like probably longer than that, I, I don't they've been around since they were the Continental Wrestling Federation, which was 1951, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, can we agree with this, guys? Who here is a fan of Bruce Lee? I know they can't see us, but raise your hand if you're a fan of Bruce Lee. My hand <laughs> is raised. Get out. Of I consider Bruce Lee after watching his scene in Into the Dragon the father of the MMA type of stuff we see these days. You remember that opening scene fight where he had the fingerless gloves and he was yeah, I remember that. I remember, that from was, Enter the Dragon. Yeah. That is the type of stuff we see today in MMA. I haven't seen that before, Bruce Lee, to be honest, in movies. So would we, would we be safe to say that without that one scene right there, we would have never had MMA? Mm. I don't think I, it's just an opinion. Um, I, I'd say, yeah, Bruce Lee. Um, I'd say that Bruce Lee influenced MMA immensely because because of his, you know, that scene and and 
and what he did, his contributions to the martial arts and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I, I I'd say that uh, without Bruce Lee, martial arts in general wouldn't have been as popular as it is now. And especially in the world of USC and MMA and stuff like that. So, yeah. But uh, any closing I, thoughts on that? I got more thoughts on it. <laughs> I'm not, not. I'm far from closing. So, okay. So, um, there's the other thing about uh, you know, MMA and 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 pro wrestling is that MMA is has a long way to go in terms of entertainment value. Like pro wrestlers um have they have more marketability and, and see the thing about MMA, it's presented almost like boxing. Like if you were to put boxing commentary, the audio over MMA, I wouldn't be able to tell what the hell's going on. Yeah. You know? And while wrestling is considered a sport, I consider it a sport. It's not a sport like MMA, boxing, and stuff like that, or even martial arts competitions. Just the way it's presented. So it's presented well enough right now. I yeah. think it has a great presentation, but you know, if there was ever a type of MMA where they actually started doing storylines, like over the top stuff, like the WWE, but they didn't hit each other for real during the storylines, but actually when they actually went to combat, I think that that would be doomed for WWE. Yeah, and, and the other thing is is that um, a lot of uh, a lot of the MMA fighters they take inspiration from from pro wrestling in terms of promo storylines and and you know all that stuff and characters and and actually like some MMA fighters have have used pro wrestling moves in their matches and, and stuff like that. So, and of even course. MMA, MMA is boxing, martial arts, and wrestling. That's basically, that's, you combine the three and you get MMA. Yeah. And, and a lot, and it might be MMA and UFC, stuff like that. It might be quote unquote real or, or, but, but it's nowhere on the level of, uh, you know, athleticism and and entertain. It's not as entertaining as pro wrestling is in terms of creativity and wait, and whoa, all whoa, that whoa, stuff. whoa, 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 whoa. Since <laughs> the last time pro wrestling was entertaining was maybe seven or eight years ago, right, Josh? Yeah, <laughs> eh. okay, yeah, yeah. maybe. But at least, I mean, WWE. Of course, now it's. It's, I think it's garbage. But, but if we were comparing, if if we were comparing um, the pro wrestling of of uh, <laughs> of like you know six years ago or or back when it was at its prime, like pro wrestling would have would have like blew MMA out of the water. <laughs> of See, course not. But I now have an argument to make about that pro wrestling right now especially in WWE, in, in New Japan Pro Wrestling, whatever. Um, it's People say the in-ring style is the best it's been in forever. I don't agree with that. The reason I don't agree with that is, yeah, the moves look cool, but there's no in-ring psychology anymore. There's hardly any believability. That's the one of the reasons I'm such a big Roman Reigns fan. Not the character or the promos, but just when he actually gets in the ring during – pay-per-view main events it feels so believable like he's actually kicking your ass that's the reason i love watching him wrestle yeah and and i think um some of those reasons you know the lack of psychology and selling and, and stuff like that is what's killing pro wrestling not mma or you know anything like that. which leads me to um my next point about um uh, you know about uh, the decline of pro wrestling and and, and whatever. But first, but I want to like, I want also want to add how um, like what's interesting is that uh, you know guys like Ma, uh, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but Muhammad Ali, he actually took inspiration from pro wrestling. Like he, you know, he'd watched. Uh, a bunch of promos and 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 look at their characters and that's how he actually 
use them for his interviews and stuff, and that's how he got famous, partially. Partially got famous for that. I mean, he wrestled Gorilla Monsoon. You know, he was he respected pro wrestling. So, so yeah. You know. So I think there's like um in some respects, you know, MM I don't think uh I think MMA and UFC has a long way to go into the- But you gotta remember this, dude. Vince McMahon said it himself. If it's a good product, I don't care how good the competition is. If it's good, people will watch it. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah, what do you think, Josh? Eh, it's just what can we enjoy these days? Just if it's wrestling, we like it. If we don't like it, we shit on it. But it's just what can we enjoy? Right. Yeah, and it's and it's and, and it's not me knocking on MMA or anything like that. Like I like, I like uh, I'll I'll occasionally watch some MMA matches or whatever, and like especially the the women's division or. Dude, uh, the the bouts, man, especially the women. I was talking to our friend Josh Carrie Steller. Yeah, and uh, you know, you know Carrie, you know Carrie, right, bro? Yeah, no, yeah, we have a friend named Carrie Steller. She's big into MMA, really big oh, yeah. into it, and she's even been attacked on Twitter by big MMA people, including uh, Conor McGregor, uh, aka Conor McShitstain, but. <laughs> Um, I was I, I was telling her one time I said you know to be quite honest I respect MMA female fighters more than males because the women will fuck each other up they are not like guys where they're constantly covering their faces like oh I don't want to have a love scar or whatever the hell they uh they will fucking hit each other without blocking and they try to end the fights quickly. Much quicker than the guys do because they don't want to get smudges. The girls don't give a shit. They will <laughs> fuck each other up, and I respect them for that. And they're so fucking brutal to each other, dude. Way worse than the guys are. Yeah, and this yeah. is a fact. If you don't believe me, watch watch a female UFC match. One of the main events featuring Ronda Rousey, for example. You know, they don't block yeah. like the guys do. They try to go in and they take it to give it. Especially um uh, that that remember that fight um, between uh, Ronda Rousey and Holm? <laughs> I like I swear, dude. Like Holly Holm and other UFC uh, female UFC fighters, they're not they're not afraid to take hits and 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 get get to business. If you know what I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. It's I respect the female. That's why I, I respect the the female fighters more than the male fighters because. Especially, you you have chicks like Chris Cyborg who, who will just mess somebody up, like you said. Yeah. Um, so what's so, what's the, what what else is on the agenda, bro? I have one more thing I want to talk about. Um, now we're gonna go into the decline of pro wrestling and why it's. You know what's killing the business, and uh, they're profitable. Right. The booking sucks. That's it. That's all I have to say. Oh, okay. oh, I, 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 I didn't know we covered that, but I think what's. Uh, I remember during the Attitude Era, when I was a teenager, I was always saying, "I'm going to get a part-time job just to buy wrestling stuff, just to buy <laughs> DVDs, action figures, and all that." I don't feel like that no more. Did you ever feel like that, Josh? Eh, so, so so I remember the first shirt I ever had was a Austin three sixteen shirt I bought at Hills department store. Uh huh. Yeah, I was, I was you know like, what? There should be a shirt that says Hinkle three sixteen. You just kissed my ass at Macy's window. <laughs> I, I I should talk to uh, Rue TV about that. That would definitely be a that that's money right there, bro. Inkle three sixteen, you just kissed my ass at Macy's window. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Mister Root TV about that. Good idea, Mister Hustles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh wait, yeah, wait, wait. Was... I'm sorry, I say. Uh, you got, you got to see what's going on on Twitter between Piers Morgan and Heath Slater. Oh, what's going on? Uh, Piers Morgan is attacking Heath Slater on Twitter. That guy's a clown. He attacked um, Corey Graves yesterday. I think that that guy has it out for wrestlers because he's had Jesse Ventura on his show 
and Jesse Ventura, a former wrestler, a former main event wrestler, a former big money drawing wrestler, completely obliterated him on every political subject that was brought up. So I feel like he has a grudge against professional wrestlers. That's just what I think. <laughs> yep. But here's what he said about Heath Slater. He said, Heath Slater said, Pierce Morgan knows who I am. In Pierce Morgan response, don't get too excited. I asked my son to name the most washed up WWE wrestler. Oh my goodness. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I need yeah. to watch the debate he had with Jesse Ventura. Jesse ate him up and spit him out. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say, like when I was a kid, I used to, like, I wanted to buy a whole bunch of wrestling products. Like, I remember asking my my uh my dad if, if if he could buy me like uh one of those um tna raven action figures and he actually got me one <laughs> and and uh there wasn't too much i could get as a kid because i don't know my parents they just didn't want to waste money as they said <laughs> but when i grew up like man i bought a whole bunch of wrestling merchandise like shirts and, and DVDs and and you know calendars and stuff like that a whole bunch of exclusive stuff it's I mean I wish I could have done that as a kid but oh well <laughs> and as far as the the decline of pro wrestling all I got to say about it is is uh part of the reason why it's it's not as good as it used to be is because the business has been too exposed and you know WWE is, has been putting out a garbage product <laughs> in terms of you know whatever they're doing now. So and there's no selling or ring psychology anymore as there as there used to be, and no characters. I already I already went on a huge rant on that like in one of my other videos. So so that's all I had to say on the subject of pro wrestling declining and whatnot. <laughs> All right, what else what else we got? Uh I wanted to talk about uh AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. Who which one of you checked that out yesterday? I sort of I I, I watched the end ending of it. It was a clean finish. How about you, Isaiah? I didn't watch it at all. <laughs> yeah, you don't catch up with them, but I, I, I recommend you watch that match. AJ Styles in that match proved how great of an in-ring technician he is. He sold for Jinder Mahal. He made, even though he won the match, but he made Jinder Mahal look strong. He made Jinder Mahal look like he could really, really wrestle. And that goes back to guys like Mr. Perfect, that they could make the most average wrestlers or even really bad ones look great in the ring. Yeah. You know, I mean, for example, when he took Jinder Mahal's finisher, the Coloss, which is getting kind of mixed reviews because it's just a Cobra clutch into a slam, he took it like a champ, and he made it look devastating. You know, AJ did. Yep. Yeah, it was a great match. It was a great it, match. It was. It's just, it, yeah, you're right about that, Mel, because it's like, he, he basically... Jinder Mahal uses the same finisher what Sergeant Slaughter used back in the day, sort of, in, in, in a way, right? And yeah, yeah. It's just uh, the difference is is that uh, Slaughter used it. Sergeant Slaughter and Ted DiBiase used it as submission holds. It's he uh, Jinder turns it into slam, almost like a choke slam. Yeah, it's just it was a clean finish, just the way that the fans enjoyed it. But to spoil it online for the American viewing audience, that's a whole nother topic, you know? Yeah. But it was just, I was just like really entertained in the match. Check out the four minute um, highlight, but. Yeah, definitely. I, I it was agree definitely with you. a very good match. It was, and it was a clean finish. I was, I was yep. surprised. Um, I'm a, okay, I'm not a big AJ Styles. I'm not a fan of AJ Styles at all, but I do appreciate his high flying skills and and and, oh, and he also has good in ring psychology. Like I remember when we spoke yeah. about this a while back, I was saying, how the hell is Roman Reigns and AJ Styles gonna mesh? 
when Roman's more of a power wrestler and this guy's more of a high flyer, they had two barn burners. You know what a barn burner is, right? No. Uh, it's a it's a wrestling term for a great match, a fire match, super. Oh, okay. And the two matches they had last year when Roman was champion, they were great matches. They were great yeah. matches. I've I've mostly seen his work from uh not all they were both selling well. They were both uh bumping really well. Um you know, AJ made Roman look better because obviously AJ's the veteran, but you know, that not to take any away from Roman, because you know I love, Roman can wrestle his ass off. He's a way better wrestler than Jinder Mahal. Down, down. And I still think he's a better wrestler than John Cena. Anyway, <laughs> That's another example of when you have a veteran that that's a, a true in-ring technician, a guy that not only can sell, but he can also make someone that doesn't have the abilities that they have as far as the in-ring goes or the experience look great. Yeah, I appreciate AJ's work mostly from... You know, even if you're not a fan of him or the character, I still think you should check that match out and do a review on it. I think you will really enjoy it. All right, I'll try doing it. <laughs> All right, what else do we got? Josh, do you have anything we wanna you want me to cut a promo on or someone? <laughs> oh. Oh uh, well nah. I already, I already touched on the man child Melchin Magoo shit, so I'm good on that one. Nothing comes to mind. Yeah, uh, Josh and Dave Meltzer got into it a little bit, Isaiah. What happened? Uh, it was a tweet that I responded to Vince Russo that had uh, Dave Meltzer in the t tagged. And uh, all of a sudden, Meltzer Magoo, as Vince Russo calls him, said, Oh, rating's not your best friend. It's, he made fun of my grammar in the tweet. Made you no sense. Funny? After he made fun of your grammar, and I can find about a thousand typos from Dave Meltzer. Um, <laughs> there's actually a, a new Twitter account called Meltzer Typos. Yeah, I saw that. I'm following that one. That, that's funny. Uh, I absolutely followed them too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I ain't worried about Meltzer. He's a he's a man child, and what I mean by man child is that he's a nine year old kid stuck in a 58 year old man's body and the only boners he get is where he has a wet dream about japanese wrestling <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> just I like heard. bruce pritchard says but i bet if it was in the tokyo dome in japan he would have gave it five stars a five-star boner i like dave melter um we've uh, interacted a little bit i uh, i used to be subscribed to his newsletter the thing about dave Meltzer that i don't like is that uh, he's calmed down a lot but back then on his all in his older stuff he used to be just absolutely mean the shit he used to write about the business he was mean as a fuck like it was like jesus how could you be so like how could you write something so horrible you know <laughs> Like the yeah. guy, the guy's sarcasm level was like at a thousand. It's just insane. Now he sucks. <laughs> you know, and he's very polarizing in the wrestling business. You know, a lot of wrestlers hate him, and a lot of them like him. So it's crazy. I haven't heard, I haven't heard much about him though. <laughs> yeah, he's he's one of the he's one of the wrestling's most famous journalists. Yeah, journalist yeah. being the term loosely. Yeah, <laughs> dirt sheet. A dirt sheet. He's a dirt sheet writer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, he he talked about this show. Um, um, and um, yeah, they they had been talking about it for they've been talking about it for quite a while. He wasn't <laughs> happy with his position in the company, and from what I was told from my guy there, he said that he was let go because of this and that. So I don't know if he's going to stay with the WWE or he's going to go to New Japan, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how Meltzer sounds. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Uh, his voice, I hate hearing his voice. It's just, you know, yeah, you guys ever seen that horror movie, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare? No. Nope. Uh, I, I have, may have a long time ago. 
Uh, there's like a scene in the movie where uh, the guy had a hearing aid and he's in Freddy's world and then all of a sudden Freddy comes out with like the chalkboard and does like the whole nails on the chalkboard thing with his with the metal knife fingers. Yeah. It, it does like he when Meltzer talks, it's like him scratching on the chalkboard and head explodes. That's how I feel about Meltzer. Oh my goodness. Oh, God. I have some strong feelings of him. <laughs> Eh, I ain't worried about him. He don't mean shit to me. I got other shit to worry about besides him. <laughs> Speaking about wrestling media, I just found out that Kayfabe Commentaries is going to have an on-demand channel, and that is freaking awesome. Meaning like their own version of Netflix where you don't have to order a DVD here and there. You can actually just pay a monthly subscription and watch all the stuff that they offer. It's awesome. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Kayfabe Commentaries is cool. Sean Oliver, I like I like his stuff. I'll have to check that out. Get out. Oh, no. Um, All right, what else do we got, fellas? That's it for me. How about yeah. you, Josh? Well, uh, the first time being on this great podcast, uh, I'm, not, I'm good. Yep, I pretty much let out everything I wanted to speak about. And watch as soon as I end the broadcast, I'll be like, "Oh shit, we didn't talk about this." But... Oh wait, wait, wait! Oh wait, there's something I just came to my mind here. What do you guys think about the rumor about Canada, the Bound for Glory, this past Sunday, that they hired extras to pay to watch the tapings and stuff? It's just a rumor. <laughs> I, I wouldn't take it too seriously. I haven't heard about any anything about that. Yeah, but yeah, they said. It was on the dirt sheet that had the website of the casting company in Canada that had uh, had a Facebook post said, oh, if you want to make $150 for four hours watching wrestling, come to the tapings. And uh, unfortunately, they took down the Facebook post about 24 hours in the bound for glory. Well, I have heard companies doing that, casting companies. Um, I'm not saying that it actually happened, but that business actually does exist. You yeah, know, like the, the, the fans in Lucha Underground are there for free. And when yeah. they go, they're there for three or four episodes. Yeah, and they say in the ticket tapings that, oh, uh, we're going to be staying there for four or five hours. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mind doing it. Get they paid don't. to watch something I enjoy, I would do it. I would yeah. too. But yeah. that's just sets TNA back. Yeah, I, I just don't fucking get it. I, I just don't get it. Why this is ridiculous. Like <sighs> these people are they're the epitome of insanity. They keep trying to do some shit over and over and over, and it's not freaking changing. Give it up. You've rebranded four times. Jarrett's gone. He's come back. He's gone again. Uh Panda Energy's out of the picture. Dixie Carter's out of the picture. You people are not profiting. You can't get over the views, the slump that you have. It's been over five years since you can't get past 300,000 uh, viewers. What the fuck do y'all... What the, I don't get it. What the fuck? No, it's, it's a new thing that Global Force Network, the Global Wrestling Network, trying to be like the WWE Network. Yeah, yeah. And nobody, nobody's signing up for that. They're not even. Are they still the Global Force Network? Because I heard that Global Force. They're called Impact Wrestling again. Yeah, it's a, it's the Global Wrestling Network, and uh, what it is is just, it's all this TNA shit going back to the Asylum days. Well, through, through I the am, day. I'll be honest, Big Josh. I am gonna probably tr do the thirty day trial because it. Uh, I love the Asylum years. The years 2002 to 2005 are my favorite years in TNA, especially the first year. Yeah, especially when Vince Russo came in. I love I love the early days of TNA. So I'm, and and you know the spike, the early spike era, and so I'm gonna probably gonna do the 30 day trial. I'm probably gonna subscribe to that, and in addition, maybe the WWE Network for the old stuff there too. So. Um, I haven't just I haven't subscribed to WWE Network in two years, unfortunately. But I'm I'm thinking about resubscribing to the net to that network because uh, I I might pitch an idea that Vince Russo, Jeff Lane do a review or something. I don't know yet. I might talk to Root TV about that too. 
But other than that, it's just a mind blowing how Impact Wrestling brings a global wrestling network on the internet, just trying to make ends meet with all the slump and all the shit they're going through right now. Yeah. And then not only that, I'm pretty sure that when Billy Corgan gets the NWA back off the ground, he's going to take a lot of TNA fans and wrestlers. I hope so. He's a, he, he's got a great mind for the business. I give him yeah. credit. And I think the reason that he, he wants to get into the wrestling business so bad is the same reason as I did is because he likes the creativity of it. And you, you yeah. know, uh, you know, darn well, uh, he's going to be the writer, the head writer. He's going to be the one coming up with the match concepts, the storylines. You know, he might hire guys like Jim Cornette and Vince Russo, but strictly for character roles. Yeah, I maybe, saw- maybe not them, but you know. Oh no, I'm pretty sure he'll get them, but he'll keep them apart. Like, you know, one of them will come in for a few years, and someone else will come in. I yeah. saw, I saw some of his work at uh, ECW, and it was pretty good. He yeah. was trying to buy ECW. He almost did. Dang, what, what what stopped him from from doing so? It's McMahon. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, did you said you said something about uh, Lucha Underground fans coming in for free? Like, like how the heck did they have that work out or whatever? Because it's like I thought they actually um that they, they had to pay to get in or, or i don't know you get, you get all, go online the lucha underground on twitter they'll have like the email address you can get how many tickets you want in the party and then uh, they have the disclaimer that there there are fights that happen right near your seats you might be jumping out of your seats from time to time when they throw them into the chairs fight in the stands said uh, watch it when they bleed because you might be at risk for hepatitis Wow, because I was I wanted to go to a taping so bad, but I just couldn't. I I didn't know how to do it, so I was like, "Dang!" Yeah, that that's what that's what they do. They got so many rules about if they get hit by a, like a gush of blood from the wrestlers. One, the medical staff had drag you out of the out of the building, and you get like a hepatitis shot. That's what I was hearing from a couple people. Wow, it's crazy. Yeah, but I mean, I for me, I I mean, if I had the opportunity to go to one of their tapings, I would do it. Like, I don't even care. <laughs> like, you know. play shot or whatever. Like, as long as I can see like some of the greatest matches in in, in Lucha Underground history, then I'm down for it. Like, count me in. <laughs> mm-hmm. But the problem is, I think they had uh one. There was like this one site where where uh. Where you could win a uh, a trip to one of the Ultima Lucha tapings, but yep. it was it was a uh, it was from last year or is pretty much expired. So I, I said bummer, <laughs> but um, yeah, pretty much all I had to say on it. Mm. Are well, you guys? Anything else? I'm uh, nope, I'm good. Me too. Okay, guys, I appreciate y'all coming on today at short notice. Uh, this will be processed and uploaded to Isaiah's channel. What is it, Pro Wrestling Society? Yeah. Okay, so like, make sure like, y'all like, subscribe, comment, and share this content on his channel. Any closing words, guys? Where can they follow you at, uh, Big Josh? Oh, well, I'm at Big Josh TV 7K. Just search for Big Josh TV, and I got I got the in the pits on the Vince's Vince Russo's YouTube channel. So it's all good. All righty, all righty. And hey, you, Isaiah. All you have to do is just like and subscribe to my channel. That's will be good. <laughs> I'm doing that right now. Awesome. All right. Have a great day, people. Thanks for listening, and we'll see y'all later. See y'all.